and welcome. My name is Joy Cheney Nyozi. Um, on the 17th of November last month, 2021, the president signed three bills. And one of them is the Refugee Act, which is what we are here to discuss with this amazing lady. Her name is Charity. Um, so she will introduce herself, say who she is. Okay, mostly who she is. <laughs> Charity. Thank you so much, Joy. So my name is Charity Wangoi. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Uh, so I work in Kenya. Um, I've worked in the refugee space for close to three to four years. And I'm happy to be here. I am happier to have you here. Okay. So, the president signed a 2021 Refugee Act. Yes? Mm, Bill. Yes. Yeah. Act. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so, he signed it. What does that mean? It means that we now have a new law that will uh, have us manage and protect refugees. So initially we had the Refugee Act of 2006, which was right. not aligned with the Constitution of 2010. Now we have a new law and mm -hmm. that means that uh, the exchange that's going to happen in how we manage and protect refugees in this country. Right. Um, so what was that? The, the document that was signed 2021 was supposed to be signed in 2019, right? Yes. So what is the difference? Why was it not signed in 2019, but the president has finally signed it in 2021? Okay. So we've, we've had several refugee bills that have just made it to mm. become acts. Then we get to the end point and they're not able to to be signed for one reason or the other. So 2019 uh, had been a rigorous year. Mm -hmm. We also had COVID-19 right. um, after 2019. So during 2019, we had a lot of um, lobbying and advocacy for the, for the act. Mm -hmm. But then when COVID came, a lot of things were shut down. So we could not progress with the committee sittings. And so that's why it has taken a bit of time. Mm -hmm. The first time we were supposed to have a new law, it was not signed because of a uh, lack of public participation. And as part of how laws are made in this country or any government operations, it's mandatory to have public participation. So at that time we didn't have public participation. And so it was not signed. I think it was around 2017 there about. Mm -hmm. But now we have a new law because now uh, the, the committees are back in sitting and things like that. So so there's nothing very mysterious about why it was not signed in 2019 other than the fact that a lot of operations stopped in 2020 now 2021 um, and also it was at a stage where it needed to be discussed by committees and that needed people to be there physically right. there's also the issue of political goodwill what takes priority of our what so those mm. are some of the things that just any other legislative process would go through Okay. Yeah. So, given that, um, other than just the the process where it was at, that mm -hmm. that being the only determinant of, of when it was signed, mm -hmm. what is enshrined in this con constitute? Uh, why am I saying constitution? What is okay. en enshrined in this act? Yeah. And um, does this okay? It being signed in twenty twenty one. Does it yeah. have anything to do with the impending camp closure camp twenty twenty two? But am I just projecting? Anyway, those are two questions. So let's yeah. start with the first one. So what can we say? I think it is timely when you look at the fact that we've had also the issues with the border, the Somali border. Right. And we've also had issues now with the camp closure. There could be an influence. At the time when he was signing, I think there was a U.S. Um, representative in the country. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of politics around legislative um, signing and things like that. And... I would say that it was time because it has been in parliament for quite some time. It's been okay. two years. Mm. Um, so it was time for it to, to be moved. But of course we can't negate, we don't know the backstory. So it is a possibility that um, it also has to do with the camp closure and all the other diplomatic politics that run around legislative processes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what is in it? What, what is in this bill that's now an act? So one of the things I love about the new act is the recognition of an asylum seeker as mm. is defined. Because in the previous act, the asylum seeker was just defined in the beginning. But throughout the act, you'll see the asylum seeker is mentioned. I think the other good thing about uh, the new act is that a lot of um, refugees will be able to plug in into the economy. Right. Uh, because there's a specific clause that talks about them being able to be given an enabling environment for them to access um, social services, health, and 
things like that around mm. that space. So I think it would be a good opportunity for refugees and asylum seekers to participate even in like paying taxes this a specific clause on that however needless to say there's also the issue of the comments that the president give before mm -hmm. the signing of or the act mm -hmm. and how they will reflect in the act because the final act has not yet been published i've not seen a copy of it myself uh, so we only are relying on the 2019 one before the comments that were given so it would be very interesting to see how that plays out in the in the in the act but they are very mm. good opportunities i think even the issue of local integration is mentioned right. there that's a good opportunity for refugees and it will open up the space more mm. um there's also the expansion of wh where a designated area is and how a designated area can can, can be. be identified and stuff like that so i think i feel like that will also cover the urban refugees mm. because ideally we used to say we used to operate an encampment policy meaning yeah. all refugees should be, be in camp. but now because powers have been given for uh, identifying of designated areas, um, I think that's also a good opportunity to expand the space. Um, so on designated areas, um, there's a, I think the president mentioned that um, the, the constitution provides for some of these spaces to be like the prisons and uh, police stations. Mm. How comfortable would someone be with going to these places um, and are we are we looking at um, another, I don't know, like another uniform for the police or another uniform <laughs> for the police so that they yeah. can be able to accommodate this? Is there, is there a need for the police to be taught yeah. that now, listen, you need to free up a certain area yeah. to welcome asylum seekers for time and then, yeah. Yeah. So first of all, in my opinion, mm. asylum seeking should not be criminalized. Okay. I feel like that is an area of um, advocacy that mm. uh, asylum seeking is not a criminal offense. It's just the basis of it's migration. I mean, mm. if I move from here to Uganda, because um, I am at risk, I'm going to seek asylum. There's nothing criminal about that. I'm not a criminal, mm. so I don't see why I should be in prison. But um, even with that, um, I think the reason why that clause or that comment was given is because in other laws a transit center is defined as that so it means that it doesn't mean that all of them who come, come. are going to go into ah, prison, okay. like you prison see? yeah mm. no 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 they are just other spaces that they can occupy and you okay. see you cannot also stay in prison for more than 24 hours right. so that means it's just a transit it's literally a transit until you're able to get your papers to go to another place yeah, because situation. you see in the same clause it has police stations, remand homes, um, and uh, detention facilities and things like that. So it's because the definition in a particular act reflects the same. So we cannot have two definitions of transit center uh, in two different acts, meaning two different things. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a risk of um, criminalizing asylum seeking, right. most definitely. And that for me is also an area of concern. But let's see how it will reflect, how they'll draft it in the act once we have been able to read the final one. Okay, so yeah. um, other than the risk of <laughs> criminalization, yes. yeah. you talked about um, the, the act providing opportunities for integration. I'm using this word lightly. Yes. Um, mostly with the registration process. Yes. Help it speed it up. Mm. And I remember at some point when the president was talking about camp closure, he said that the registration processes would be sped up and mm. if people's IDs had expired and mm. renewed. How far along is this process? How far along is this transition process? Usually, you'd give a transition period in the in the act itself they usually give a transition period yeah. so we'd need to see if it's still one year or 90 oh, days okay. Eh? Okay. I, I feel like the machinery that needs to go into speeding up the rsd process yeah. is a lot it has to do with stakeholders who are both government and non-government so it means that uh, we, we are able to be better time managers than we have and having an act will not make us better time managers it's how we implement the, the act, act right. so that we are able to be, be better time managers and you mm. see also with the powers that are given to the um, now ras that i can see have slightly changed mm. they might be able to have an opportunity for budgetary allocation from the ministry of interior direct over and above the funding that they get from non non-state actors mm. so that will give them uh, more 
I don't know. They need to come up with a structure that will speed up time. Um, I like Huduma Center kind of. You know, Huduma Center kind of thing, mm -hmm. or just um, more if it's human resource and things like that, that would be a good opportunity for them to do that. But at least we have the act to keep them in check every right. so often when we are seeing it slowing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's the opportunity. In terms of local integration, um, I think that is still tied to the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act because that has not yet been amended or anything of the sort. But you see just the mention that there's local integration, a possibility of local integration in an act mm. is an opportunity for advocacy or okay. trying to see how that can reflect on the refugee. Yeah, because now that will only be accessible for a refugee. Right. Yes. Okay, that makes... Yeah. I, I like that you... you you make concepts that are all over the place a little bit more centered. So that yeah. what, what I'm saying all over the place in my head. In your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my final ask is yes. this. Um, the refugee ID is blue yes. and the Kenyan ID is brown. Yeah, and green and, and green orange. And it's colorful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then um, the refugee card has, I think, five numbers, and the yes. Kenyan one has six numbers. Yes. And I recently learned that, uh, well, what I can access with my ID, most yeah. refugees cannot, yes. right? Yes. Um, how, and, and so my question is, what can a refugee access that I cannot with their ID? What are this, what is the opportunity present once mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a refugee actually is documented because that is very important mm. documentation is very important so mm. what are the opportunities available for refugees once they're documented yeah so i think um one of the of the opportunities that they are able to get a refugee passport this is the conventional travel document the mm. ctd when you have the refugee id that's the only time you can travel out of this country so that's a good opportunity because that means you can also go out and like if you're doing trade and business and stuff like that you're able to leave the country the other thing is you're able to open a bank account and i'll say right. that very uh, likely but yes you're able to open a bank account you can't open a bank account without an asylum seeker uh, pass with an asylum seeker pass uh, what is you you're able to get the kra pin you're able to get business permits you're able to buy a car you're able to and do all these have things a DL. And, and I have a dl most refugees cannot drive because of dl of the dls yeah mm. and now one of the challenges you can have that but the challenges is that the refugee id expires after five, five years, years right. and not even that you get a different number every mm. five years so that has been the problem that has been we are not able to show the nexus of yes i have a refugee id but how come it's expiring after and five years and why am i getting a different number so i don't mind them not having an expiry date because a refugee status is supposed to be temporary, temporary. Yeah. but the problem i have is the change of number why is the serial number changing so i would just call for the government to figure out how they are able to maintain the number and just change the expiry date the same way you change your id not your id your driver's license mm -hmm. you're able to renew your driver's license and still maintain the same the number, same number. If we can have the same for them that would be good because now once somebody has exited and gone to another country you just have one number to cancel the challenge of having all these multiple numbers is that people can fake these things right. people can go and duplicate just change the expiry date there's a lot of risk of having all these numbers because even what are the guarantees that if you give me my refugee id for 2022 to 2027 that i'll hand in I'll the, other one. the other one yeah so those are some of the challenges i feel that the government can work on so that they're able to be more socially integrated and economically integrated. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So in your parting, what do you hope hope to see in this in the refugee space? Yeah. Um, I mean, going forward 2021 to 2022, mm. we ha Kenya has elections yeah. and we went ahead and said, we want people out of here in yeah. 2022. Yeah. That's a lot, right? Yeah. So what are your hopes? Mm. What do you hope to see in this transition? And your final take. Okay. <laughs> I think I hope to... I hope to see that the refugees able to get access to a lot more than they were able to. And for me, I'm very passionate about social and economic empowerment. This means that they're able to access work permits. Mm. At least that will 
alleviate a lot of the plight that they are going through in the country of asylum because they are able to plan for themselves, they are able to plan for their families, they are able to save, they are able to get insurance, they are able to do a lot more because they will be in a more structured kind of, uh, of employment or formal employment. That would also mean that a, a, a child who is in university or, a, or a, a lady or a gentleman whose university can have hopes and dreams of actually getting a formal job and not being harassed or being underpaid because mm. they have just a different, a different identity. Type. Yeah, so that is my hope and dream. And I hope that the act will be able to enable these opportunities be realized. And yeah, I think um, with regards to camp closure, I, I'm anticipating it to slow down uh, because of the transition period. I'm anticipating that it will be more humane in, in how we handle it, if it's expanding the designated areas, if it's the uh, alleged East Africa I, identity, which I'm not sure how it's going to be implemented. I'm really curious to see the, the word, written word being yeah. put into action. That is what I'm very curious to see. Yeah, but I think it's a good opportunity and it's a start. I, I wrote an article and I was like, I called it a new dawn. It's like a new dawn. Where it's was like, your article? It's going to be published in some website near you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I consult, I consult with uh, Relo in Kenya. And so we were doing some work together. And Relo in Kenya is an organization that is bringing in refugee led organizations under its umbrella within right. Kenya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a new dawn. It's like they are Jerusalem or is it Israel? One of those. I, I cannot yeah. quite answer that. The promised land. Uh, uh, yes. Is, is that not canon or heaven? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. With that, um, thank you. You're very welcome. much i i really enjoy this so thank you thank, thank you, you joy for having me it's been Anytime. amazing i hope i have you again okay, yes i have you I, on set again yeah that would be amazing i feel like i should uh, paraphrase what i've just said again so okay. i i am glad that you agreed to come on set i hope you're welcome to, have, to host you on set again that would be amazing I'll, i'm sure i'll come back again <laughs> yay yeah. thank you thank and you. thank you for watching um I have had so much fun doing this interview and I have learned so many things. And I invite you to follow us on our social media pages, Discos KE, across all platforms. And when you head on to um, YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Okay, and, uh, and all the other platforms as well. Share, like, and then subscribe. Okay, bye. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>